Thank you very much. Thank you for having me and giving me the, the opportunity to speak here in this uh, webinar of the BLEO. Uh, the topic of my presentation is the impact of the pandemic on the uh, office uh, space utilization and real estate. And precisely, we are looking here at the phenomena of working from home, or what is commonly called in the academic literature, teleworking. Uh, this new phenomena that gained a lot of prominence during the pandemic of working from home is supported by information technology, specifically tools like Zoom and the other uh, conference video softwares that allow uh, to, to connect uh, and, uh, between students, professors, colleagues, and co-workers in a comfortable and reliable environment. And because of that, uh, people have been coming less and less to work. And what started as a temporary arrangement very quickly became sort of a new normal, where more and more companies were allowing their employees to work an extended time period of the week from home. And this brings about the question uh, whether companies will start diminishing their office space and what will be the impact on the real estate market. So let's look at the situation before the pandemic. Uh, many companies, especially in the high-tech industry, used to have luxurious office spaces. Uh, we see here the area uh, in square meters, like for a CEO office, and a conference room, and a kitchen area. These are quite extensive spaces that uh, people used to occupy. And the, the office was more than square meter. It was also a, a symbol of status. The, more, the bigger the office, and uh, it meant that that employee was a, a highly ranked in the organization hierarchy. And here we see uh, how very quickly from the start of the pandemic, the, the fraction of time that people were working from home became higher and higher. And uh, a research by Eric Brynsfonson in 2020 found that over one third of the labor force has switched to remote work. We see here in the bright colors that people were working like 30% of the time. The pink color represent 30% of the time that people were working from home in United States of America, 30% of the week. Uh, the research questions that this investigation brings about are, does the coronavirus pandemic impact the demand for office space and the price per feet? Uh, and more than this, we were interesting, my colleagues, uh, Dr. Gabi Pinto and uh, the two students, Akiva and Amir, we were interested to further investigate whether this trend is going to continue after the pandemic uh, wanes. And we will show this in the, during this presentation. And how are companies and specifically high-tech companies, which are very popular in Israel, how are they going to adapt to this sort of new normal? So let's start by a literature review 
formally defining what does it mean teleworking? Teleworking means utilizing of information and communication technologies to do work outside of the employer's premise. We commonly think that teleworking is specifically from home, but uh, in the academic literature, teleworking can be also be from a, a, another location. It doesn't necessarily have to be from our home. Like it can be from a, from a, a, a park nearby, or from, from uh, any other location. But commonly, we, when we think about it, we think about at home. And then it brings about this idea that people are going to uh, combine their family life together with their work at the same time. And this requires a certain balance. For example, not to be distracted by, by, by our children during the workday and how to manage to do to pay attention both to our work and to our family at the same time. And we have here some studies that uh, recent studies that have investi uh, investigated teleworking. Uh, the design of our office wasn't built from the beginning to deal with such a pandemic which requires social distance. Uh, for example, many high-tech companies have what we call shared office space where 20 or 30 employees are sitting one beside the other in a open space in a shared uh, huge hall and without any sort of social distance. And the pandemic suddenly required a less occupancy of those shared offices and furthermore to keep space between the employees. For example, some companies build some type of uh, artificial walls in order to further isolate the employees in their office space. And uh, here we see how three very famous companies have adapted to the new situation. For example, Facebook uh, announced that uh, they will allow about 50% of their employees to work remotely. Uh, similar, Google are willing to reimburse employees who are uh, purchasing equipment in order to work from home. Like some of the employees didn't have a, a home office or a, 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 a reliable home computer. So Google was a, a willing to share those expenses. A, and sa same thing with a, another big company, Amazon, which announced that workers who can work effectively from home are welcome to continue to do so uh, during the pandemic. So these are indeed three uh, very established organizations, Facebook, Google, and Amazon. In terms of theory, any uh, uh, fine research need to be substantiated by a theoretical background and in, in the case of this research that uh, my colleagues and I have conducted, the theory, the contingency theory provides the, the lens to comprehend uh, the, the, the adaptation of companies to the pandemic, specifically the, the contingency theory claims that the organization structure should fit the uncertainty in the environment in order to enhance performance. And this is exactly what happened during the pandemic. Organizations had to fit both their working practices and their office space structure 
to the restrictions of the pandemic, the social distancing in order to maintain and enhance their performance, their profits. This, this theory is, is very established in the literature, in the studies of Lawrence in 1967, Drazin in 1985, and so on, and Andy Van de Ven, uh, Professor Andy Van de Ven from the University of Minnesota commonly used this theory. My research hypotheses were several. Among them, we see a few examples. For example, hypothesis one, a new employment model is developed, which allows work, workers and employees to uh, shift uh, to work at least a few days in the week from home. So th this is becoming a common practice. A second hypothesis, was more mathematically oriented and tested quantitatively in the research. And it talked about the, the spread of the coronavirus and maintaining a social distance is negatively correlated with office space price and market demand. The third hypothesis was that the office space design will be modified in order to preserve social distance. And let's see how these hypotheses were tested statistically. The research method was a multi-level analysis which encompassed several uh, analytics. First, we conducted an extensive research review, literature review, in which we found uh, articles that defined what does it mean teleworking and different modes of teleworking. We also conducted case study interviews with several real estate agents in Israel in order to collect data and analyze it to understand how the pandemic impacted the real estate market. In other words, whether the value of properties has decreased during the pandemic. And here we should mention that uh, this is a very serious topic because it has also impact on the tax that, that cities, municipalities, and governments are collecting from renters of office space and owners. Those case studies were triangulated with survey data that was collected uh, from employees of high-tech companies in order to investigate their working habits. And last but not least, we also conducted a Google trend analysis. Google trend uh, search is gaining more and more status as a leading method of investigation in the academic literature in the 21st century, especially because of the popularity of companies like Facebook and other uh, uh, social media uh, organizations. And uh, interestingly, a Google search engine is extremely popular in research about real estate, which is a perfect fit for the topic of this investigation. And it's also very popular for investigation of the spread of diseases. Uh, specifically, when we conducted the literature review, we saw how Google Trends search was impacting 
the spread of other diseases like flu and so on. People were uh, interested, for example, to do Google search in which areas to visit or not to visit or in which locations not to, to pass by because they are infected by a disease. So we have a combination that Google search is popular both for real estate and for infectious diseases, which is like the pandemic, the, the COVID. And here we see some data analysis, how the, uh, when the pandemic started, uh, here it should be mentioned that the pandemic occurred in different countries in a bit of a different timing. So in Israel, the pandemic uh, started around 20, uh, March 2020 uh, with a few cases and then it magnified and, and there were uh, several waves of the pandemic. And the, the Google search trend shows how uh, keywords such as teleworking suddenly the interest of people in them spiked. And this is what we see here in this graph. Our survey research uh, was very insightful. As you can see from this uh, uh, diagram, the x-axis shows the number of days that people are, are uh, going to come uh, to the office after the, during the pandemic and especially what they think after the pandemic is over. And we see that even after the pandemic, people have, are, are shifting their habits about three day, two to three days a week, people are going to continue, continue working from the office. So there will be here a balance, a balance that half of the week, people are going to work from office and half of the week, people are going to work from home. <clears throat> and this, this is what we asked here, the, the employees in the survey, how many times a week do you plan to come to the office after the pandemic is over? And we see that most of the employees said two to three days. In other words, there will be a balance between working from home and working in the office. By the way, this survey was conducted in a, a company in Israel, which is called Mobile Eye, which uh, is a very prestige high-tech company in Israel, which uh, is building technology for driveless cars, autonomous cars. Uh, our research also showed that municipalities' prime interest is to retain income from uh, property taxes. And the, the decrease of usage in office space uh, has diminished the amount of taxes that the cities are able to collect. And uh, another research we found was from different cities in Israel. All this research was conducted in Israel. I'm, by the way, from Israel. From, I work jointly at the Hebrew University and the Azrieli College of Engineering, and the students and colleagues were from Israel too. So we see cities like Haifa, Erzeliya, Tel Aviv, Ramat Gan, Netanya, Rehovot, my hometown, Jerusalem, Ranana, Petah Tikva, in all those cities, we see a sharp decline of five to seven percent in the usage of office space and the, its value. So the, there is indeed a trend of a decrease, decline in value of office real estate. And this was also a, a, a further substantiated in the interviews we conducted with real estate agents. 
in here, the students have conducted a correlation analysis of the Google Trends keywords, office space, telework, office sharing, coronavirus, worker satisfaction, social distance. And indeed, there is a significant correlation between keywords that were associated with the pandemic, like coronavirus, and a real estate a terms like office space, office sharing, a, and so on. So the, a, for example, we see here that teleworking is negatively correlated with real estate. And it's positively correlated with coronavirus. Another company in which we conducted a case study, which is a very established company is Ex Libris. It's a company which is, has offices and headquarters in Jerusalem, in Israel. Uh, the company has over 500 employees. The office area is designed as private office with, with joint workspace. And the, when the pandemic started, all the employees shifted to work from home. In the short term, they were performing board meetings twice a week. Uh, they completely shut down the entire office area. So everybody in the beginning went home. And uh, they also freezed recruitment of new employees. That's also a very interesting phenomena. And in order to uh, maintain activity, they purchased about 400 laptops for the employees in order to allow them to work remotely. And they canceled the acquisition of new office space. So, what are, are the work environment adaptabilities that we have seen? Some companies have moved to what is called staggered arrival. In other words, not all the employees arrive at the same time, like at eight o'clock in the morning. Some people arrive at eight, others arrive at nine, some people arrive at noon time and so on. So is, there is a gradual arrival, arrival and departing in order to decrease uh, interaction between people and, uh, and keep social distancing. We saw decrease in prices of office space rental. Co many companies we saw shifted to short-term contracts. They deferred payments and they further moved to sublease. They subleased some of their, those companies that had huge office spaces subleased part of it to other organizations because they, they needed less space. Another interesting agenda of our research was to see what type of innovations were made in Israel. Israel is commonly uh, iconed as the startup nation, and uh, many innovations were made in Israel to try to keep the employees safe because not everybody was able to work from home. There are, there are certain professions that are not able to work from home, like healthcare especially, So here we see uh, some innovations that were made in Israel. Uh, for example, Zebra Medical Vision developed an AI platform in order to uh, detect potential COVID symptoms and impacts. Uh, so Sonarax developed technology with, which uses ultrasonic sound waves 
to detect the distance between the employees. And if too many employees are gathering in one proximity, some type of a signal or alarm starts. The Israeli defense R&D unit develop a 30 second COVID test. Uh, uh, and the, for example, the Hebrew University and Azraeli College innovated an antiviral textile produced by Copper Inc. printing process to avoid contracting COVID. Uh, indeed, many, many, many types of innovations. Uh, there were also some scientific discoveries like the Hebrew University Center of Bioengineering discovered the usage of cholesterol drug to lower virus related symptoms. Uh, the, the Israel Institute for Biological Research developed a new vaccine. The Technion, uh, which is a, 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 a one of the leading institutions of engineering in the world developed a technology that samples sewage system in order to detect COVID outbreak. And, and other uh, uh, technologies were developed also to uh, improve uh, mask because mask the, is, it was, was one of the most uh, popular PPE equipments protective equipment and, and a lot of research was done how to develop mask that is more uh, efficient in filtering the, the disease. So uh, to sum up our findings I found the, the, the short term modifications that companies uh, started are becoming long term habits. In other words, not all the employees are going to return to work at the office after the pandemic is over. A, a very interesting phenomena that we have discovered uh, is a major advantage of teleworking in terms of its, it allows and enables women to apply for higher salary jobs because it allows them to better balance between career and childcare. And it contributed to reduction in the wage gap bet between men and women. So the pandemic allows to women specifically to apply for jobs that previously they were hesitating because of their family obligations. Uh, According to Wendy Singer, an executive director of Startup Nation in Israel, uh, we found also that uh, employment diversity has improved because of the pandemic, because employees such as uh, uh, Israeli Arabs residents who, who used to work uh, far in, in the suburbs of Israel, we're now able to apply for jobs in the center of Israel without the daily commute. So for example, uh, Israeli Arabs and Druze who are working in the Galil in Northern Israel are now able to work in Tel Aviv companies, prestige, highly paid companies without the need of daily commute, they can work from home. So again, it improves a lot inclusion and equity in the, in the working place. Uh, the analysis indicated a decline both in procuring office space and its price per square meters. And uh, it should be noted that most of the feedback that we got from companies indicated that the productivity while teleworking remains re relatively high. So despite the distractions at home, employees are able to be very productive while working from home. So people can be productive and stay at home. Uh, we recommend future, future research to continuously monitor the situation because 
Unfortunately, there are more and more waves of the coronavirus, and we, we truly hope and pray that the pandemic will be soon over. Uh, and uh, it would be interesting finally to investigate how the impact of teleworking will be on employee promotion and salary. For example, do employees that work from home are going to have the same opportunities for promotion and the same salary raise like their fellows who are working from office? Uh, I would like to thank everybody for giving me this opportunity to share my research findings. And uh, if you have further questions, you are welcome to send me an email to this email address.